Hey, um, my name is Ben. Uh, I'm working on the mobile testing platform team at Uber. Before joining Uber, I was working for Facebook on the performance testing pipeline. So first of all, let me uh, take a quick survey. How many of you have used the Uber application on the right side? How many of you Ubered here today? Okay, a few of you. And how many of you uh, have used the driver application? Or do you even know there is a separate driver application? No? Okay, not everyone. Um, so after I joined Uber, I uh, found a unique challenge in the mobile testing scenario. And with the hint I gave you, can you imagine what it is? Anyone? Interaction? Okay. What else? So in my mm -hmm. real time, okay, real time. What else? Locale, okay. Yeah, we want to test any for locales. Um, so imagine one of our most important scenarios getting a ride from point A to point B, which requires the ride application and the driver application to collaborate with each other. That means, for example, the driver application cannot request a ride before the rider goes online. So that means we need to establish a way to let the two applications talk to each other in the same test scenario. To achieve that, we created a um, platform agnostic integrated test runner called Octopus, and which provides the uh, signaling mechanism to allow multiple applications, simulators or emulators, communicate with each other in the same test scenario. Uh, I'm not going to uh, look, uh, walk through the details. So if you want to know more about how we um, implement the signaling or the cross-app, cross-device testing, you can look into our uh, GTAC uh, video uh, last year uh, on YouTube. Uh, I guess we will share, we'll share the slides after that, right? All right, yeah. So we're going to share the slides. So now we have uh, solved the challenge. What else? So to, yet, to effectively test the mobile application, it's very important to understand how the test pyramid looks like and to apply the, the pyramid to our test story to have the right amount of tests on each level. For example, on the very top, we have the real end-to-end -end, uh, test scenarios or test cases covering our core flows. For example, taking a trip is a core flow. And in the middle, we have uh, hundreds of scenario-based tests, which uh, Rob will talk about later, uh, which skips certain UI flows and put the application into certain UI scenarios directly, which will improve the testing efficiency. And on the very bottom, we have thousands of unit tests to verify our business logic. And today, uh, we are going to talk about the end-to-end -end test cases and the scenario-based tests. So we want to get a very good signal by running our end-to-end -end tests on our CI system continuously. But the end-to-end -end tests using the real network is sometimes slow and unstable because of the network dependencies. So we do want to um, run the test faster and more consistent and predictable on our CI system so, so that we can have a good signal on our application quality. So to achieve that, we want to make the test running in isolation without any external dependencies. What we did is to make the um, test running without network. So we introduced a network record replay mode. So the same test case will run in two modes. In the, replay, in the record mode, we, the test case is still hitting the real backend. But when the response come back, we store the responses in local files. And in the replay mode, 
we run those test cases and intercept all the network traffic and serve back the response from the local files so that the test case doesn't depend on any network uh, um, and responses uh, from the real server. So here is the code example for Android. As you can see, we have a special annotation on top of the uh, test case, which is called replay. So when you set the record is true, we run the test case in the record mode. And if we remove that, we run the test in replay mode. So by default, all of our test cases on CI is running in uh, replay mode, which will make our test more stable and without any network dependencies. And this is uh, a similar uh, example for iOS. Uh, this is using XCUI test in Swift. And similarly, we set a network cache uh, when launching the application so that all the test, uh, all, all the network traffic will uh, come from the, the local uh, cache files. And with that being said, let me show you a demo of the network replay test. So the test is run by Octopus, our uh, uh, test runner. And first, it will launch the application. In this case, we're launching the uh, driver application. Okay. okay. And we will do a sign in. As you can see, we are using dummy dummy as the username and the password because everything is coming from the, from the local file. So it doesn't matter whether we put the real password and the fake password. And then we get the incoming request. This is also from the local uh, cache file. And then the driver start a trip. And then complete a trip. And then rate the rider. So this one is running on a single application without any network response without any network uh, dependencies. So normally, if you run a real end-to-end -end test, you need a driver and the right application. But by using the network record and replay, we are able to run the whole scenario in a single application without any network. So this greatly improved our uh, testability for the end-to-end -end test cases. But end-to-end -end tests might be um, still slow and still a little bit more complicated. So we dig deeper, and we are looking into the scenario-based testing. Now I'm going to pass to Nirav to talk about more details of the scenario-based testing. Thanks, Bian. Uh, <clears throat> okay. Looks like this is not working. So yeah, uh, as Bian was explaining, uh, apart from network record and replay, we also wanted to dig deeper and solve more issues that are make it easier for our developers to write tests with our test frameworks that we create. So some of the we come up came up with a lot of solutions, and two of those main solutions were rules and scenario based testing. So let's dig a bit deeper into what rules and scenario based testing is and how it solves a lot of issues for us. So what are rules? So basically rules allow us to share setup and tear, tear down logic between the test methods. Now using rules, we can make our app go into certain states and also remove the, the reset the app state after the test has run. So how do they help us? They make the test code easier because now you don't have your setup and teardown logic in your test class. It's a shared class, which is used by a lot of test methods. So second point is that, which is shared setup and teardown logic. And the third is abstract out complicated logic from the test. So basically because 
your test is just going to use a rule and after that it's going to you are going to write just the test logic or the whatever you want to test so you are basically abstracting out the complicated logic of setting up and re resetting the app after the test method test has run so there are some of the, these are some of the examples of the rules that we have created so at uber we we have a lot of features that we want to test and we use experiments rule to test our ab features which we can enable or disable in the app so using experiments rule developers can easily enable or disable those features similarly location allows the app to be set on a specific location because we enable the features based on location then there is accounts animations app reset which all do uh, basically some of the some of the other uh, setup and tear down logic to make the test easier to write so this is one of the examples of a rule so as you can see the one of first rule is the location rule so in location rule you can easily specify device equals some location which is chicago suburb in this case so basically just before the test would start this this rule will set the device location at chicago suburb similarly you can set the app specific location like right? you can say app equals let's say san francisco so your app will be now in san francisco this basically can help you create a scenario where your device is probably let's say in sunnyvale and your and you want to call a ride for your friend from san francisco you can do this with simple this just one annotation there so this test is basically just trying to sign in with a valid account and verifying whether the login is successful or not so this this is a very easy way like changing the location for the device is a bit complicated stuff and just by adding one line above your test method you have solved that problem and abstracted out that complicated logic of changing the location now after understanding the the rules what is scenario based testing so scenario based testing basically when bn was explaining network re record replay network record replay helps us to eliminate the network irregularities but there are some other regular irregularities with the ui interactions that we make with our apps so scenario based testing basically allows us to reduce those ui interactions with the app and make our test more deterministic so how does it help it speeds up our test run because now we are probably not going to go through all the ui interactions to run the test it's easier to maintain because you are writing less code it's easier to maintain deterministic test because you are very sure that your app is going to start in certain state you can it it is going to be easier and it's going to be deterministic that your because you will be seeing this specific screen on your test start so your test will be deterministic let me give you an example let's say we are i am testing a scenario where a user is trying to cancel the trip that they, they have just requested so what are the ui interactions that normally will go through in this scenario Uh, the user will first log in then they will select a service probably let's say uberx then they'll select a location from where they want to call the ride then they'll select a button probably click on the button say go and tomorrow we came up with a new feature where when you select uberx there is a pop up that comes up and saying probably there is uber pool is available which is a lower rate option for you now whatever the test cases there are there are probably going to be more test cases like this which are been going through these similar steps and those tests are going to start failing because of this single pop up so these are the basically you are uh, you are interactions that we wanted to eliminate and so let me give you an example how did we eliminate or how are we trying to eliminate these kind of irregularities with our ui so in this the first part of the code where it says uh, replace scenario manager do when recording so this part of code is going to run only when you are recording the test so when bn was explaining we have record replay mechanism so we store the network or server responses in the local files so when you are recording that part of the code is going to run and when you are re replaying the test is going to start from the line which says dispatching layout so in that case whenever you are running the test in the replay mode you have eliminated all the steps that you are going to run when uh, for actually getting to that layout this is one part of the scenario that we are trying to test but there are more complicated scenarios which we want to simulate 
and for that we are actually creating more methods in scenario based testing which will complement this similar method so to give an example let's consider uh, a credit card user which is probably a rider whose credit card has expired it is really difficult to create those kind of scenarios in a real app or even for testing and we accept lot of payment methods there is also those kind of scenarios are also very difficult to simulate so we are working currently working on automating those or creating ways to uh, uh, simulate those scenarios using object uh, using data mocking where we can actually uh, inject the data creating mock objects and inject those data in our app and simulate those scenarios and also creating apis on our server side so that whenever the test is running the server responses basically will say that this user specific user in this specific state and then your test will start from that step onwards and that's all from our side thank you